We are back here on Fort Myers Beach one year after Hurricane Ian. Now you still can find the devastating effects of the storm all over this island. But well, you'll also find are some ridiculously beautiful beaches like this one, some really good spots to eat and drink, and a resilient community that's rebuilding together. Now we're starting this episode off right here at Lover's Key State Park. But before we show you more of this park, we've got to show you where we had breakfast. And later, we're going to show you where you can stay and how to get around the island, so be sure to stick around. We arrived on Fort Myers Beach hoping to find significant progress from when we'd visited four months prior and excited to try a popular breakfast spot that was still closed on our last visit. Located at 110 Mango Street, Heavenly Biscuits, like so many other Fort Myers Beach businesses, lost their brick and mortar location during Ian. And while they may be operating out of a food truck for the time being, they're still one of the top rated breakfast spots on Fort Myers Beach, along with Mom's located right across the street. After a very short wait, our breakfast order was ready and we couldn't wait to give it a try. So we're ordering kind of light this morning because there are a couple more places we want to eat at later today. We got the special biscuit sandwich and the very last pecan roll. And there are so many pecans on that. I was not expecting that. It looks delicious. All right, what are you going to try first? I'm going to save the dessert for last and start with the sandwich. It looks really good. It does. Oh yeah. So basically it's a cinnamon roll that's loaded in pecans, huh? Pecans and the frosting for cinnamon rolls, yeah. There was only one left and we got the last one. We figured they must be really good yeah. since they were almost sold out. What do you think? Well, and I also read online that sometimes I think they only have them on the weekend, so I think it's real lucky that we got one today. This is really, really good. It is very sweet, as you'd expect. Mm. Yeah, this thing's falling apart already. <laughs> yeah, I can see. Wow. That is really good. Ready for this much sugar? I don't know. <laughs> it's worth it. It's good, right? That is a ton of sugar, but yes, it is ridiculously good. All right, so now that we have tried a biscuit sandwich and a cinnamon roll from both Heavenly Biscuit and Mom's, what do you think is better? Oh man, that's so tough. You can't go wrong with either. I'd have to give a slight edge on the sandwich to Mom's because they literally have the best biscuit I think I've ever had. But Heavenly Biscuit might have the best cinnamon roll I've ever had. It's delicious. So I really can't pick a winner. My recommendation is that you try both of them. Heavenly Biscuits does also offer some lunch options and is currently open five days a week. Be sure to check their Facebook page for updated hours. Now that we've shown you a great place to start off your day, it's time to get back to the beach. And our first beach stop takes us southeast to Lover's Key, where at 8700 Estero Boulevard, you'll find Lover's Key State Park. While it did sustain substantial damage from Hurricane Ian, the state park has been back open since June of 23. Access to the park is $8 per vehicle of two to eight people, with payment available via cash or credit card. We found the main restroom and gift shop building to still be closed, with both now being located in nearby air-conditioned trailers. The gift shop is where you can rent paddle crafts or beach chairs and umbrellas, and also offers a variety of souvenirs, clothing, snacks, and beverages. We were especially happy to find that the tram to the beach was in operation, which would save us a lot of walking on this hot September day. The tram ride was quick and comfortable and dropped us off around 1,000 feet from the beach, where we found a shaded seating area and more air-conditioned restrooms. From here, we made the quick walk over one more bridge and onto the beach, where we were happy to find a green flag and hardly any people. So we finally made it out here to Lover's Key and our initial impressions are that it's not busy at all, which we love. It's also really shelly, which Jamie loves, but because it's so shelly, the sand definitely is not soft. So if you're the type of person that loves a beach with nice soft sand, this probably isn't the best beach for you. So we've only been on this beach for a few minutes now and it looks like Jamie has already found herself a bunch of shells. I think this is like the least amount of work I've ever had to do to find seashells like this. 
I already have a handful and I'm only picking up the best of the best. They are just laying out here everywhere. Now the water at this beach seems to be really shallow. It looks like you could go out quite a long ways before you'd actually have to start swimming. And the water's also really calm today and very clear. So you can see a lot of stuff on the ocean floor. It's definitely not the softest beach, but it is really pretty. What do you think of the water here? Well, you do have to walk through quite a few shells to get to the sand, so I do kind of wish we would have brought our water shoes, but it is really shallow and it's ridiculously clear, so if there's a manatee or a dolphin swimming by, we're definitely going to see it. You do have to be careful stepping around all these shells, but at least the water is clear and you can see them. So if you keep walking up this beach, you will eventually reach the north entrance of the park. But I did talk to a staff member earlier today who told us that they're actually replacing the bridge that connects Lever's Key to Fort Myers Beach. So it's going to be quite some time before that entrance is back open again. While tearing ourselves away from this gorgeous beach wasn't easy, the skies were beginning to darken and we still had so much more to see and do. As we make our way back to the park entrance, we do want to mention that this park is absolutely massive, spanning 712 acres across four barrier islands. In addition to its beaches, the park offers miles of hiking and paddling trails, and we can't wait to get back to explore them. After a quick shuttle ride back to our vehicle, we made our way around six miles back up the island, where at 2801 Estero Boulevard, you'll find Charles Brothers. Like our breakfast spot and so many other businesses on Fort Myers Beach, Charles Brothers lost its brick and mortar location during Hurricane Ian. But just like so many others, Charles Brothers is rolling with the punches and has been operating out of this food truck since the summer. Alright, Skylar grabbed our food and he ordered a fresh horchata because he saw somebody else order it and it looked really good. Now even though they have a nice place here to sit and eat, we have an even better place to have lunch, so we'll see you there very soon. As we made our way back southwards to our lunch spot, we found many of the beachfront houses and condos to still be showing the effects of Ian, although many more properties appear to have been rehabbed when compared to four months prior. We'll show you more of our drives through Fort Myers Beach later in this video, and if you'd like to see how the current conditions of the island compare to four months prior, be sure to check out our eight months after Ian video after this one. But for now, we gotta get back to our lunch. Now normally we would be more than happy to sit at the picnic tables at Charo's Brothers, but we knew that our rental was ready and that it had this outdoor patio with this view. Now we are gonna show you the inside of it in a little bit, but first we have got to eat. We ordered a barbacoa burrito, which looks amazing, and also three corn tacos. So that's the barbacoa burrito, right? Mm-hmm. The barbacoa is really tender, and I like that the cheese sauce is on top of the burrito. It's a nice added touch. While the burrito was very good, it was these street tacos that proved to be both mine and Skylar's favorites. Seems like a pretty authentic taco. Yeah. There's no cheese on it, right? Just onions mm -hmm. and cilantro? Yep. And a corn tortilla? Mm-hmm. Yeah, simple but good. I am gonna try the pork taco with some radishes and some of this green salsa. The pork is tender and juicy. The shells seem to be fresh. I really like that green sauce. All right, Jamie, now that you've tried all three of the tacos, which one is your favorite? It was actually a bit of a surprise. I thought that I would like the barbacoa the best because that's just typically what I like the best. Mm -hmm. But this one, I really enjoyed that chorizo. It is super flavorful. And with just a little bit of this salsa, it is delicious. So I'm going to go ahead and try the chorizo taco before I eat it all. So what do you think? I think I actually agree with you and like the chorizo the best. So. If you're going to Charles Brothers, which you definitely should, be sure to try their tree, so. Now that we've finished our lunch, it's time to give you a tour of this house. But since Jamie's a lot better at giving these tours than I am, I'll take the camera from here. Welcome to Island Grand here on Fort Myers Beach. This is a five bed, four and a half bath vacation home located right across the street from the beach. 
Now this house has a lot to see and we are gonna start right here in this wide open living, dining, and kitchen area. Now I absolutely love the contrast between the white cabinets and the dark floors and how this gorgeous granite just ties it all together. Now this kitchen features a full set of stainless steel appliances as well as a Keurig machine, toaster, coffee pot, and blender. This kitchen comes fully stocked with everything you'll need to cook, including dishware, utensils, and pots and pans, and also two hidden spice racks. Now, I didn't even know that drawers like this existed until today. Next to the kitchen is the living area with a sectional couch and additional seating to the right. Next to the living area is the dining room table, which can comfortably seat around 10 people, but if you prefer to dine outside like we do, there is additional dining space out on the patio. We really enjoyed our lunch out here today with a view of the water, and we know that this view is only going to get better as the island continues to recover. Now this house is great for groups. It can sleep up to 14 people. As we mentioned earlier, it has five different bedrooms and two of those bedrooms are here on the main floor. This is the only bedroom that doesn't have an ensuite bathroom, but you don't have to go far because there is one right next door. What we love about the bedrooms in this house is that they all offer a TV, ceiling fan, closet, and some really cool rustic beach vibes. Let's go check out the second bedroom. Now on the way to the second bedroom, you will find the only half bath in the house. The second bedroom is a little bit bigger with a king bed and its own full bath. And I have noticed that all the bathrooms do come with Echo Botanical soap, body wash, shampoo, and conditioner. Now before we head upstairs, there's one more feature we wanna point out. And that is there is a laundry room with a washer, dryer, and sink. Time to head upstairs. This third bedroom is probably gonna be the favorite of the kids in your group because it has the bunk beds. It also has an attached bathroom which offers a shower and tub. Next up is the fourth bedroom. Now this bedroom has to be my favorite so far because of the coral accent wall, this bed, and because the attached full bathroom has a very spacious shower. Now, as much as I love this bedroom, I do think I will probably love the fifth bedroom even more because we haven't yet even seen the master. But we have one more feature to show you on this floor before we get there. This floor has its very own laundry room with a good sized washer and dryer. Now we have made it to the fifth and final bedroom in this home and it has so many features to point out, but let's start in the bathroom. To the right, you'll find a separate room with the toilet. And to the left is a walk-in shower with dual shower heads. It's very spacious and has really cool pebble floor. It also has this nice deep jetted tub and dual vanities. Now let's talk about this master bedroom. There is a lot to love. It has a king size bed. The fans and the lamps are really cool. And it has its own Keurig machine so you can get out of bed, Pour yourself a cup of coffee and take it out to the best feature of the room, which is the balcony and its views. Now this is the best spot to catch sunset. So this rental actually has one more feature that we have yet to show you. We filmed it earlier today, so let's go check it out now. This house has its very own private pool along with comfortable loungers, an outdoor dining space, grill, and even a TV. We do have to thank the owner and Sun Palace Vacations for hosting us during our time here on Fort Myers Beach. Currently, Sun Palace has over 70 rental options out here on the island like this one and this one. While we show you around the Blue View property, we do want to mention that the vast majority of Fort Myers Beach's hotels and condos remain closed at this time. But Sun Palace offers Fort Myers Beach vacationers a wide variety of rental options to choose from, including the two houses which we've shown you in this video. And while properties like Island Grand and Blue View are both wonderful rental options for larger groups, Sun Palace also offers a variety of smaller, less expensive Fort Myers Beach rentals for those with a smaller group or a smaller budget. 
So if you're interested in renting either of the homes we featured in this episode, we will leave links to each in the video description, as well as contact information for Sun Palace. And lastly, we do have to mention that there's an additional perk of renting with Sun Palace, but we're going to have to wait until tomorrow to show it to you. For now, it's time to grab dinner. We arrived at Petey's Upper Deck just a half hour before close, where we'd have a bar nearly all to ourselves, as well as these waterfront views. We started off with a beer and a banana daiquiri, which both hit the spot after a long day in the sun. But it was the pizza that brought us to Petey's Upper Deck, as we'd heard it was the best in town. We opted for the shrimp scampi pizza, which did sound a bit unusual, but came out looking absolutely amazing. We soon found why Petey's is known for its pizza, as the crust was light and crispy, the shrimp were tender and buttery, and the flavor was delicious. But since it was now past closing time at Petey's, we decided to make one more stop before we called it a night, which took us to Doc Ford's Rum Bar and Grill. Skylar ordered a rum on the rocks while I went with a mojito mocktail, but the main reason I'd come to Doc Ford's was for the dessert. Okay, so I ordered the double decker brownie, and honestly, it is about twice the size of this. The double-decker brownie and ice cream was a great way to cap off the night, along with some live music on the waterfront patio. Day two in Fort Myers Beach started off slow, as we were both quite exhausted from our prior day's adventures, but we still had lots more to explore on this second day on the island, so we'd need a good breakfast to get us going. That took us back to the downtown area on Fort Myers Beach, where at 1051 5th Street, you'll find the Lighthouse Tiki Bar and Grill. One of the first businesses to reopen after Ian, the Lighthouse Bar has been back up and running for nearly nine months. And while this tiki bar does open at 7 a.m. each morning, we learn that they currently are not serving breakfast. But what they were serving on this Saturday morning were $3 Bloody Marys, which were quite strong and very good for just three bucks. While Skylar would have gladly drank a couple more three buck Bloody Marys, we had lots to do and still needed to find breakfast. Thankfully, we knew of a spot where we could get it. After a couple of drinks at the Lighthouse Bar, we did have to come and stop back by our rental because our ride for the day has been delivered. Now yesterday we mentioned that there was another great perk when you rent with Sun Palace Vacations, and that is they partner with the Moke and Cabana Club. And that means when you rent with Sun Palace, you can get a great deal on the club's rentals, including this open air moke that can be delivered right to your driveway. Based out of Sanibel Island, the Moke and Cabana Club will deliver their mokes as far north as Boca Grande and as far south as Marco Island. We'll tell you more about these mokes and how you can rent them a little later in this video, but first, let's grab that breakfast. Our new breakfast spot took us right to the beach, and although it was now closer to lunchtime, we were happy to find that Eats on the Beach serves breakfast all day long. We found Eats on the Beach to offer a pretty impressive assortment of food and beverages, including two for five bush lights and $5 Bloody Marys. While we did pass up on the bush lights and Bloody Marys, I did order myself a frozen mango tango, which paired quite nicely with these beachfront views. As far as we're aware, Eats on the Beach may currently be the only spot in Fort Myers Beach where you can eat and drink right on the beach with your toes in the sand. But if you're aware of another spot, let us know in the comments. Our food orders consisted of the Pollo Loco and Health Nut sandwiches, and while they were two of the pricier breakfast sandwiches we've ever ordered, this breakfast was one of the best we've ever had right on the beach. Located at 61 Avenue C, Eats on the Beach is just steps down the beach from the Beach Bar and Mojo's Coffee, both of which we visited four months earlier. To see more of those spots, be sure to watch our 8 Months After Ian video after this one. So Eats on the Beach is one of the few spots on Fort Myers Beach where you can eat with your feet in the sand and with a view of the Gulf. Now we really enjoyed both of those sandwiches and I was tempted to take advantage of the two for five bush light deal as well, but I am really enjoying driving this moke around so I decided to pass on the drinks at that spot. The wavy wall looks so good. The wavy wall? Yeah, the wavy wall. That's what got painted today. Oh. We're definitely gonna check that out. But before we show you the new Wavy Wall and the rest of the Times Square area, we've got another beach to hit. And while we make our way to the far north end of Fort Myers Beach, we're going to tell you a bit more about this moke. 
Originally designed as a British military vehicle, today's Mokes are made for the islands. The street-legal, open-air vehicles can seat up to four, are 100% electric, and can be charged with your standard 110-volt outlet. With just a four-hour charge time, one of these Mokes can take you up to 40 miles. Our Moke had a top speed of 35 miles per hour, which we found to be perfect for driving around the island. To rent your own Moke, visit MokeCabana.com or call 239-722-MOKE. And to see our experience exploring Sanibel Island on a Moke, be sure to subscribe to our channel so you won't miss next week's video. As we made our way up towards the north tip of Fort Myers Beach, we found the majority of hotels and resorts to still appear to be closed, with one exception being the Pink Shell Beach Resort, which partially reopened to the public way back in March. Just a few hundred feet past the Pink Shell Beach Resort, we reached our afternoon beach spot at Bowditch Point Park, which had been closed four months prior on our last visit. So we've made it to Bowditch Point Park on the far north end of the island. This park opened about a month ago, but none of the amenities yet have been restored. Some of the areas are still looking pretty rough, but right now the parking is free and you can access the beach, so we figured we might as well show it to you. As it was now afternoon on a Saturday, we expected to find a busy beach at Bowditch Point Park, but as you can see, this beach was anything but. So like the beach we took you to yesterday at Lover's Key, the beach here at Bowditch Point doesn't have very many people on it at all. But unlike the beach at Lover's Key, which is full of shells, the beach here hardly has any shells and is full of soft white sand. Now from this beach, you can see the bridge that goes over to Sanibel, and I think next week's episode, we are going to start it out on the lighthouse beach over there. So there's a little sandbar out here about 100 feet off of the main beach, and it looks pretty inviting, so I'm going to go check it out. So this is easily my favorite beach on Fort Myers Beach. The sand is nice and soft, the water is clear, and I got this nice sandbar all to myself. Jamie's looking like she's ready to hit the road, so I'm heading back to the beach. Now I believe the resort behind me is the Pink Shell Resort, and this is the only one that is open in this area of the beach. I believe Diamond Head is also open, and we'll show you that one a little later on. Having heard that the Pink Shell has a bar right on the beach, we just had to go check it out. And while the bar on the beach unfortunately was closed, we did learn that there was a bar right by the pool, and that currently you can get a day pass for this pool for just $6. While this deal was quite tempting, we had other things to see, so it was time to hit the road. So today we have the top on on our moke, but you can take this top off. I think tomorrow we're gonna be driving around in one without the top. So this is the first time we've been in a moke. And I don't think people are used to seeing it around here. There are a lot of people like staring at us and taking pictures. They are a lot of fun though. As we made our way back to the Times Square area, we didn't notice a whole lot of changes from our visit four months prior. Several businesses remained fenced off or boarded up, but many others were open and appeared to be busy, such as the Yucatan and Wahoo Willies, both of which we visited in our last Fort Myers Beach episode. Down by the pier, we didn't notice a whole lot of progress to the pier itself, but we did notice a few changes nearby. Perhaps the most notable is the mural on this elevator shaft, which was once part of a three-story building that housed La Ola Surfside Restaurant. And while the building did not survive Ian, the elevator shaft did, and the new murals look great. Nearby, we found the Yotako food trailer, which we'd visited previously, but now has found a new location. We also learned that the famous Times Square clock had been reinstalled and would be unveiled in a September 28th ceremony, exactly one year after Hurricane Ian. And we can't forget the wavy wall, which thanks to the folks at Bone Painting, Beach Talk Radio, and some local volunteers had just received a fresh paint job, which looked fantastic and brought some additional life back to the pier area. As we make our way back down the island to our dinner spot, we also want to mention that we did see new palm trees being planted near the pier a couple days later. If you want to see pictures of that, plus future updates around Fort Myers Beach, be sure to check out the Beach Talk Radio Facebook page. Our dinner spot takes us just a half mile from the pier to the Diamond Head Beach Resort. Having reopened in April after being closed for more than six months after Ian, it's here that you'll find one of Fort Myers Beach's best happy hours. We arrived at Cabana's Beach Bar and Grill with an hour of
of happy hour to go, and while the bar area was quite busy, we had our pick of seats in the dining area, all with fantastic gulf views. Excited to take advantage of a rare Saturday happy hour, Skylar ordered a $7 lemon drop martini while I went with a pineapple and cranberry juice. Skylar's seven buck martini was exceptional and the views were hard to beat. Although there were no food items on this happy hour, we decided to try out some island street food. Our order included the Malaysian chicken with deviled eggs and the Vietnamese noodle bowl. Both entrees tasted pretty good and were easily the healthiest meals we'd eaten on this trip to Fort Myers Beach, but it's those $7 martinis that were the star of the show. While the food at Cabana's was pretty good, the reason we'll be coming back is for the happy hour drink deals and the views. It's not very often you can get a really good martini for $7 with views of the water, and the musicians were actually really good too. Now I know this area on the beach does not look great, but compared to four months ago, they have really cleared this out, so progress is being made. Since I did not partake in the happy hour drink specials, that means I get to drive the Moog the rest of the night. Jamie is now driving the Moog. What do you think? I like it. It's a lot of fun and it's pretty easy to figure out how to navigate. With around an hour to go before sunset, we decided to kill a little time by cruising around in the moat and checking out the condition of the island. So a lot of these condos and houses are still in pretty rough shape, but as you can see, a lot of them have had their exteriors completely redone and look almost brand new. While the recovery progress a year after Ian certainly was less than we were hoping to see, we did find a few more remodeled houses, a few less destroyed houses, and a lot less debris. But with insurance payouts, permitting issues, and lack of licensed contractors all still contributing to rebuilding delays, the road to recovery may continue to be a slower one. With just a few minutes of daylight remaining, we decided to park the moke at our rental and head just across the street for sunset. And while it's still a bit hard to believe that Beach Access 17 used to look like this and now looks like this, we still found the beach itself to be breathtaking at sunset. While we share some of the footage from this sunset, we do want to mention that the no see were a bit bothersome on this trip, especially around sunset, so be sure to pack your bug spray to help you enjoy a beach sunset like this one. After spending two days on Fort Myers Beach, it's very clear that it's still nothing like what it used to be. And while the island is completely different, in our opinion, it still is worth experiencing. While the island is still rebuilding, you can get some really great deals on lodging. You can also visit these local establishments and have a more intimate experience and really feel like you're appreciated just because you're there. And you can have a beach like this almost all to yourself on a Saturday night at sunset. So we really encourage all of you to consider visiting Fort Myers Beach. If you're also interested in the conditions of Sanibel and Captiva Islands one year after Ian, that is gonna be our next episode and you will be able to watch it by clicking here once it is available. So make sure you're subscribed so you won't miss it. Thanks for watching.